the overswing. That's what today's video is all about, understanding where the overswing can come from with some misconceptions on the idea as to how to go about reducing it, combined with a couple of really good simple drills that you can use to understand your backswing and how to reduce the arm length that it has. So without further ado, let's get stuck into it. So what is an overswing? Well, as we know, an overswing is where the arms run back, far past kind of what we would like to see, whether it be three quarter or parallel, we struggle to control the length and understanding what causes that is a really pivotal part of today's video. So of course, it's not just directed solely at what the arms are doing, but why are the arms doing that? So why would the arms run back too far? Well, sometimes we can see a loss of connection and we get quite gappy with the elbows. We can sometimes see a folding and over folding of the lead arm, sometimes the right arm as well. The right shoulder might retract and we might see a collapse of the wrist. There's all sorts of things that the arms might do. And where that will come from is your ability to not control two things, your body pivot and your tilt. So they're the two really important things that we're gonna look at in today's video. So what do I mean by body pivot to begin with? Well, what we're looking at is exactly that, your ability to turn your body sufficiently in the backswing. What you'll often find is people who don't turn sufficiently or correctly in the backswing will often see collapses and see compensation in the arms and that's why we can see that runoff. So that is the cause. So if we're not turning the body, how else am I gonna get to the top of the swing? I'm gonna go all with the arms, I'm gonna collapse, sometimes get a little bit over excessive in the hinging in the wrist and sometimes I might really pull that shoulder back behind me because I haven't got necessary turn. What you'll find is as people start to learn what it's like to turn and turn in a centered fashion, not a swayed fashion any kind of way, they'll start to reorganize their arms, their shoulder movement and their wrists in a way where you're gonna be much shorter despite um, having more turn and you're really gonna reorganize the length and the depth in your swing quite well. A really good person to look at here is John Rahm. John Rahm's for, known for visually looking like he has quite a short swing, yet he has one of the biggest turns on tour. And that's a really good example. He has this nice big body pivot, nice big turn, yet the arms only travel to here. You'll see he doesn't break down his arms, wrists and shoulders are in a really good place for him to just really powerfully move onto the golf ball versus what most amateurs do, where they feel like being grasped by the rib cage, being asked to make a swing to the top and looks very like this. There's no turn in there. So body pivot is really important and that's gonna be part of today's drill. Number two, we said tilts. And tilts especially from an up and down angle is what we're predominantly looking at here. Again, what you find people with a lack of rotation, sometimes with a lack of mobility, will often want to feel like they're completing the swing by coming out of their tilt, essentially by feeling like they are standing up out of the golf shot. We now get into place now where the shoulders are very flat to the floor versus maintaining the angle that they began at, at setup, and that's really gonna wanna make the arms just run, run, run away because there's no, there's no coil up. There's no separation between upper body and lower body because I've now lost my tilt. And therefore there's nothing controlling the arms or the length of the arms. So they're just going to keep going. So today's drill is really good. And what I'm gonna look at or use, so I say, sorry, is this belt here, just to give you a nice little visual. And this belt has a box with a little line at the top there. Hopefully you can see that. And that's gonna help us to see where our body pivot is. So to start with, this drill has two phases or two parts to it. So phase number one is we're gonna make a move in a way where we feel like this box, which sat just outside of my uh, lead pelvis, so on the kind of hip bone here, and I wanna make a move to the top where I feel like that line is getting closer towards that ball. If I can do a good job of that, that is me illustrating really good body pivot, which as we just said, is gonna to start to control the arms, the wrists, and the shoulder retraction in a really good way. The second part of this drill is the tilting part of the drill. So obviously we want good pivot, but we don't want to lift. So what you can do here, is grab your golf club across your shoulders, have the butt end of the golf club sticking out again on the lead side, and make that same body pivot to the top, but feel like when you're doing this, that that club is looking just outside of the ball. If you are coming out of your tilt, you'll see how that's now gonna to look towards the camera, which would be no good. So the difference from a downline perspective, this would be a nice body pivot staying in your tilt. This would be us spinning up and out a bit. And you'll generally kind of find that you'll do a worse job of this box as well. So do a few of those. Feel like that lead hip is getting back towards the golf ball. I'm maintaining my tilt by the golf club staying just outside the golf ball. I've now created a really good feeling of body pivot, maintaining my tilt. So 
but I can then go execute onto the golf ball with my new feel. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a comment in the comment section down below or drop me a follow on my socials. For any online or in-person coaching, please feel free to drop me a follow on the Skillist app, search David Atkins and drop me a message from there. But until next time, catch you in the next one.